You know me, Propel Slushy NFT. Welcome everybody back to another video. This is my sixth video of the sixth day of doing one video every single day for the whole month. I just wanna thank you guys for all of the support on all of my content lately. You guys make me wanna make more content. In today's video, I wanna break down a very complicated subject for a lot of newbies and also a kind of complicated subject for people that have been into NFTs for a while and that is Ethereum gas. So Ethereum gas is almost like gas for your car. It keeps the Ethereum engine running. I found this really good definition on Google that kind of breaks it down a little bit better. So let's check that out. So right here, it says Ethereum gas. The Ethereum blockchain requires Ethereum gas to keep itself running. In the same way that a car needs gasoline to keep the lights on, in this sense, running transactions over the Ethereum network is like driving a car. If you do not use enough gas, the transaction will not find its way from one party to another. So basically, to break this down in layman's terms is every single second, a block is being mined of Ethereum by people that have mining rigs, which is basically a bunch of computers that are all running together to farm Ethereum on the blockchain. So the way it works is every single second, a block of Ethereum is getting mined. Now, when you go to purchase something on the Ethereum blockchain, you have to pay gas. What happens is that gas goes to the people that just mined the last block in the Ethereum blockchain. So what happens is, say for example, you are trying to mint a project. Um, a great example is the Adidas drop that just happened recently. What happened was a lot of people tried to mint the project at the same time. What a mint means is basically you're minting a project from the actual project's website before it goes on to OpenSea.io, which is the main NFT uh, platform. And when you mint a project, you're basically buying it straight from the blockchain before it goes to OpenSea, where you can just buy it from the floor, which basically is like going into Walmart and buying like a chair straight from the floor. So it would be like almost buying it straight from the manufacturer before you get to buy it from, you know, public, like at Walmart or something like that. So what happened during the Adidas sale is there was thousands and thousands of people trying to buy at the same time. Now, a good thing to note is whenever you try to mint um, a project and it's really, really hyped up during the public sale, what happens is not everybody is going to get to mint that project. Now, whenever you buy something, what happens is there is a gas. So let me show you what that means. So when we're talking about gas, gas is called GUE or G-W-E-I. So put simply, one GUE is one billionth of an ether that is used to measure the cost of transactions on the Ethereum network. GUE is a unit of ether to measure the cost of what is called gas. Tokens thought of as gas tokens are those that are spent to take action on the network. They are the gas that makes the network function. Let's say you're executing a smart contract on the Ethereum network. A smart contract is basically every single thing that you buy on the Ethereum network. Let's say, for example, an NFT. That NFT has its own smart contract. So when you're buying that NFT, you're interacting with that NFT's smart contract. That involves a good amount of processing power. You need miners around the world to spend time in electricity, validating your contract and its operations. So like I said before, what happens is every single second, a block of Ethereum is being mined, and these are the miners that are interacting with these different smart contracts and the different blocks. To facilitate this process, you will need to pay a bit of ether or gas to the miner who mints your transaction into a block. Here you are paid a bit extra to get your transaction processed. So basically what happens is the more people that are using the network at a time that are trying to mint something or buy something, the higher the gas fee is going to be. The less people, the less the gas fee is going to be. Hey everyone, I was just editing my video and I wanted to explain one more thing that is pretty important. Whenever you pay gas, that gas fee is going to the miners that just mined a block. And those miners get to pick the highest gas fee and whatever you're minting, that gas fee that they pick goes to the miners. So the way it works most of the time is the higher gas fee that you pay, those miners are gonna pick that person because those people paying the gas at a higher premium 
is gonna give the people who just mined Ethereum more money. I know it's weird and it's funky how it works like this, like the people that are mining the Ethereum, they're getting even more money from the gas, but this is just the way that the system has been set up. So in case you were ever wondering where this gas fee is going to, it's going to the people that just mined the Ethereum. It's also very, very important to note, I do mention this later in the video, but I think that it is good to mention it here as well. If you go to say mint a project and somebody pays a higher gas fee than you do, and you are in the middle of a transaction, once your transaction fails, you still lose that gas. That's why it's really important to get on white lists because you get to mint before the public mints. And that way you are guaranteed to get an NFT from the collection during the mint instead of having to try to fight a bunch of bots and a bunch of other people during the public mint. So just remember, if you go to a public mint sale and you're trying to mint something that's super hype and say, for example, you set your gas and the gas fee says it's going to be $250 and you fail your transaction because a lot of other people are trying to transact at the same time, you will lose that $250 and you will not be able to get it back. That's why it's so important to understand gas and understand that sometimes it's just better to either buy from the whitelist or it's better to just buy from the floor of OpenSea whenever those NFTs go to the floor. And always remember, it's always better to buy during the reveal after the NFTs have been revealed than during pre-reveal, just because pre-reveal is always a higher premium. And once the reveal happens, prices normally always drop. So I'm going to show you an example transaction and show you what happens and how you can lower your gas fee or raise your gas fee depending on what you're trying to do. So let's check that out. So over here we have Etherscan. You can come over to etherscan.io slash gas tracker and this tracks exactly what the GUI price is at the moment. As you can see, the GUI is super, super, super high. Low GUI would probably be around like 50, 40, but when a lot of NFT projects are in their mint phase where a lot of people are trying to buy it early before it goes to public sale, the gas is going to be higher because a lot of people are using the network. So let's check out a simple transaction and see how this GUI affects the transaction. So right here, I have a transaction where I want to buy this fresh ape. This fresh ape is $209.33. If we can go over to here, when I click on buy now, the estimated gas fees for this is right now $187. So this gas fee is being estimated by the Ethereum gas tracker or the GUI at the time. So as you can see, the higher the GUI goes up, the more the estimated gas fee goes up and the lower the GUI is, the lower the gas fee will go. So as we can see, it's constantly moving. So for example, if say two people are trying to buy something at the same time, the person that has the higher gas fee or the faster transaction is going to get it before the other person. So a way that you can edit the gas fee is clicking on edit. So after I've clicked on edit, we can see here that you can have a low gas fee, either a medium gas fee or a high gas fee. A high gas fee is going to increase the gas but you're going to have a higher likelihood chance of purchasing that item at the time if other people are trying to purchase the item as well. The only time you ever want to mess with the gas fee and increase the price is during a public pre-sale mint because there's so many people trying to buy it at the same time and increasing the gas fee would increase your chances of buying the actual item. So you might say, well, what if somebody increases the gas uh, higher than me? Well, that's a good question. Another good question that I've been asked before is how do you know how high to increase your gas compared to other people? So there's actually a website out there that kind of helps you with that. And let's check that out. So that website is called blocknative.com slash gas estimator. This shows you the next block gas estimation. It shows you based on probability. If you scroll down after you click on edit for a gas transaction, it has a gas limit, a priority fee and a max fee. So by changing the priority fee and the max fee is going to give you a higher probability if you up the numbers of actually obtaining that NFT or that item if it is during a pre-sale or a public mint or say, for example, during the Adidas mint. Well, after the Adidas mint happened, a lot of them went to OpenSea and you can buy them from the floor. Now, the prices were constantly changing. They were going from 0.4 Ethereum to 0.5. 5 Ethereum to 0.6 Ethereum, then another one would be sold at 0.4 Ethereum, and they were just getting sold left and right. Um, most of them were getting taken up by bots, but for example, I tried to buy one from the floor for like 0.4, and my transaction failed, and I lost $50 
just because I lost the transaction due to the gas because somebody had a higher uh, priority fee and max fee than I did. So a good way to have a high probability is coming over to this website. So for example, if I wanted to say this was a mint that I just wanted to mint. Well, if I wanted to be guaranteed to get that mint instead of other people, I would probably set the gas fee based on this. I would probably set it to um, four. See, it just went up. And then I would set the max fee to like, let's just say 400. That way I'm just guaranteed to get it. It's going to say that the max priority fee is higher than necessary, but this is going to give you above a 99% probability of getting that NFT or that item that you really, really are trying to get during the public sale. This is how you are beat out by other people that are um, knowing of the gas system and how this all works and have these tools and they've done it for a while. Doing this, you still aren't guaranteed. Somebody could put the max priority fee to five and then put the max fee to 500. You never know, but increasing the priority fee and the max fee is going to give you a chance of getting that NFT during the pre-sale that another person might get instead of you just because their gas fee is higher. During the Adidas Mint, I did not increase my gas fee, which I should have done. I ended up losing out on two transactions and I lost $500 in total. So looking back, I definitely should have went and edited my transaction, increased my max priority fee, and my max gas fee, based on what Block Native is telling me here. Right here, we can see the priority fee is going up super high. So if we look up here, it shows that the GUI is 242. So we can see here, as the GUI goes up, the higher your max priority fee and that max fee is going to have to go in order for yourself to get that NFT. Hey everyone, I am just editing my video right now and I forgot to mention, if you do wanna buy something from OpenSea and at the time there's a lot of projects being minted or something like that and the GUI is really high, most of the time it's just best to wait until projects aren't being minted, so either like really late at night or really early in the morning. That way you just save some money out of your wallet and you don't have to pay a higher gas fee since there's a lot of different projects being minted and it would cause the GUI to be higher. If there is an NFT item, like say for example, you go and look at the properties of the item and the item is really rare and it's up for grabs and you think that somebody else might grab it and during that period the GUI is higher, it's probably um, a good decision to buy it if that is the item that you wanna buy and you're okay with paying the extra gas fee. If it's something that you think that people are going to grab, then it might be a good chance for you to grab it right then. That might be the best safest bet just so you get that item. But for the most part, whenever you do buy an item, normally I would wait until the GUI is lower just so I don't have to pay that extra money in gas. And remember, you can always check gas fees on and remember you can always check gas fees on a theory. And remember that you can always check the gas fee or the GUI fee at the time on Etherscan. And you can also check the probability on blockchain native. And both of those links will be in the description down below. I hope that this has been a really good explanation of how gas fees work. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm just trying to teach everybody the fundamentals and foundations of NFTs so you guys out there can do good in the space and hopefully make some profit. I hope that you guys really, really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow me on my socials. I will leave a link to all of those in the description down below. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you guys for all the support. I really do appreciate it. Another video will be coming out tomorrow. Until next time, it's been your boy, Propel Slushy. Everybody have a great and wonderful rest of your day and peace.